G'day, my name's Matt, but you'll know me as WFX Malice. Today I'm going to be showing you how to import images into Fusion 360 to create sketches. And if you think I'm sitting like this just to show off these fancy new kicks I got just for St. Paddy's Day, you are 100% correct. Let's get started. With St. Paddy's Day just around the corner, which also doubles as my birthday, I've created this shamrock pastry slash cookie cutter and this shamrock stencil. Now, rather than recreating the shamrock in Fusion 360, I've used an image, converted it to a scalable vector graphic and imported this into Fusion and created my sketch from that. So how do we do this? You wanna start with a very clean, basic graphic. More simple the graphic is, the better. You don't want any gradients, you don't want any shadows, you don't want any blur, you want a nice, clean, crisp image. Preferably in a PNG and preferably with a transparent background. From there, you can go and convert that to a SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. Vector graphics don't work off pixels like a JPEG or a bitmap file does. When you zoom in on a JPEG or a bitmap, you get to a corner, you get to a circle, and it starts to turn into little blocks all over the place. Same with gradients and blurs and fades. Vector imaging is done simply by paths. Wherever that path is, that's where the color goes. Doesn't matter how much you zoom in, that path stays exactly where it should be. Nice, clean images. So to convert a file to an SVG, you can do this through Adobe Illustrator. Not all of us have Adobe Illustrator, it's expensive. So jump onto Google, type image to SVG converter. There's heaps of websites now. It'll do this for free, but be careful. These are ad magnet websites. So watch what you're clicking. Make sure that you're clicking the correct download link. You're not downloading a bunch of malware. Once you've converted your SVG file, crack open Fusion 360 and follow along with me from here. First things first, top down view. Let's create a new component and let's give this a name. Let's call this one SVG, just so we know what we're doing later on. Let's go into insert, select SVG, click on the little folder thing over here and select your SVG file. Click open. A lot of people stop here and think, it didn't work, what's going wrong? Click the plane where you want it. There it is. Let's drag that up here. Doesn't matter where because I'm not gonna use this particular one. And I'll explain that in a minute. We're gonna downscale this though to 0.8. You don't have to, but I am. And I'm just going to okay that. Before I finish the sketch, I'm going to copy, finish sketch, right click, new component, and we will call this one cutter. This is going to be our cookie cutter. Let's hide the other one and control V. Let's create a sketch first, so we've got somewhere to paste it. All right, now I want this to be square or close to square. So if we go by the measurements here, you can see that it's taller than it is wider. Um, it's just a little bit more than 60, it's about 62 mil wide, so we want this one to be 62 high. Um, we're just gonna chop a little bit of that bottom stem off. Happy with that. Let's click OK. Now, all of these here now are blue, so we can move these. These are lines. Uh, these are your standard drawing lines. I've seen a lot of examples on the internet where people tell you to extrude it and then push pull and all these other things, and then you've got all these fixed lines. So then you've got to go through and unfix all these lines and get rid of all of the constraints on all of these. It's just a nightmare. So this is so much easier, just copy paste. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this stem wider because that's not going to work for the cookie cutter. So I want to keep these lines. I like the fact that they're already curved and why recreate things if you don't need to. I'm just going to select both of them, Control C, Control V, and I'm just going to move that over to that point there. And I'm going to move it. No, I'm going to leave it there. We'll come back to that in a second. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing here. Select all of these, Control C, Control V. 
And I'm just going to drag that over to there. I'm going to make those two points coincidental. Good, that locks them on and looks to me, no it hasn't, coincidental, good. And now we're going to put some curves down the bottom, actually I'm going to clear this up a little bit just to make the workspace a little neater. Beautiful. Now I remember I said I want this to be back up above this line here. So create just got a three point arc works for me. Great. And same again. Let's just go and trim off those excess lines. Okay, leave the inside one. All right, now we've got a solid shape again. Now, something else I do want to do because it just makes things a little bit neater down the line is I'm just going to get rid of these sharp points. Um, it'll make more sense later on. Um, the problem is, is when we go and make this a shell, um, it will draw these lines right in. And so you'll end up with this cookie cutter that goes almost right into the middle. and. By the time you make your cookie, it's going to have this little tiny bit in the middle to join. So we want to round these off. So we're going to go conic curve. And we're just going to select one point to the other. And just drag that down into the middle. Now, we don't need to be perfect with this. I'm not trying to make these isometric. I just want to add some curves in here. You're not going to notice the difference between them by the time we finish. Conic curve. Good. Two more to go. And one more. Like I said, these don't need to be perfect. I'm not trying to make these isometric. I just want to put some curves in there. And you guessed it. Trim off that excess. Get rid of it. Make sure there's no double ups. I know there will be up here. Uh, that little one there. That one and... It's the double ups we're looking for. Beautiful. Finish sketch. All right, before we go too much further, let's go back to edit that sketch. Let's select all, control C, right click, new components, create a sketch in that component. Hide the first one, control V, finish sketch. And we'll call this one stamp. So, when you're working with multiple components, there's this little eyelet thing here. That tells us this one's active. And sometimes people get confused is they'll go and open up and they'll be working here and they'll go to copy and paste something. It's actually gonna throw it into here. And that's really confusing. If you wanted to just go and create a new component and you wanna copy, you wanna copy that sketch, you can actually just go in here and just go Control C. And we go down here and they go, yep, all right, control V. Where'd it go? Well, it's up here. Let's get rid of that component. Um, we're working with our cutter. So we'll just make that visible again. We'll hide the other one. It's going to extrude it. You can extrude this absolutely any depth you want. I'm just going to go 25 mil. And there we go. Now you're looking at it going, hang on, wait, Matt. That's not a cookie cutter. That's just a big solid shamrock right there. So we're gonna create a shell and we're just gonna click on that top surface. I'm gonna give this a width of 1.2. You can go any thickness you really want to. 
And this is why we made those nice curves, because look at that nice smooth curve. If any of these were sharp corners, the sharp corner one was a lot deeper, but that would have then carried this line on and extended it way up in here to be able to line up with the other side. Just makes a mess. Been there, done that. All right, now we've got a base on here. So we're just gonna go extrude, select that base, and we want that to go up 1.2 and we want it to be a cut. Minus 1.2. And there's our cookie cutter. Now there's other things you can do to go and put a rim around the outside. I'm not gonna go into that right now. I just wanted to show you uh, how we've made a cookie cutter from an SVG file. Uh, obviously sky's the limit there with your creativity. Uh, so I'm now just gonna hide that and we're gonna work with the stamp. We're just gonna make that visible. Stamp's a little bit easier. Um, Select that whole lot, and I'm just gonna to go to Modify, and I'm going to Move. Now, I just wanna rotate this around, and there's reason behind me wanting to do that, and I'll show you in a second. Move, copy, yep, that's good. Let's go and edit that. And let's move, oh, I should've moved the whole thing up. That doesn't matter, doesn't matter. In a circle, you can make any size you want. I'm going to make this one 90 mil. 90 might be a bit big for this because we did downscale. No, 90's fine. 90's fine. Could go 85. Go 85. Yeah, let's do 85. Perfect. And the reason why I rotated that is because I'm going to give maximum space up here. That's obviously a little bit close. Never fear. Let's make this one... Let's go 30. Nah, let's go 25. And we'll just drag that down here a little. Looks good to me. And let's add some lines. Go midpoint. So there. And midpoint to there. Trim. Get rid of those lines. And you go the outside one. Any more for any more? Let's go the outside one again. Finish sketch. Select that. Extrude and you can make this any thickness you want. I'm just going to go 1.2. 1.2 works for me. And there we go. Pop that over the top of your coffee cup with, of course, your Irish whiskey in it and sprinkle it with some um, chocolate dust on top to get a nice bit of coffee out there the easy way. Or you could go and throw this over the top of your beer if you want to and uh, throw some ground uh, malt over the top of that just to create a little bit of beer art, if you will. It's conclusion time once again. So you probably noticed there was no time lapse today and that's for a couple of reasons. One is that that would look pretty boring being built up in a time lapse. Uh, two is I only have one 1080 camera. Uh, it can't be in two places at once. So at the moment it's filming this video and at the moment I am reprinting the designs on the 3D printer. Now what you guys see made in Fusion 360 isn't necessarily what I show you in the time lapse or what I've got here on the desk at the end of the video. Um, I go and design it in Fusion 360 first, I go and print it off, I have a look at it, and then I delete the files and remake it in Fusion 360 live on the screen share for you guys. Uh, so what you guys get to see is the final version, the tried, tested, and improved version. Um, so on that, you'll notice on this version that stem's very thin, so we made that a lot wider on the second one, and you can see why. Because as a cookie cutter, that would not cut properly. Um, same with on the stencil. The stencil's not too bad, but because it's obviously uh, extruded the opposite direction. Um, but yeah, for there. So same again, I made this a little bit smaller. I downscaled it, as you probably remember in the video. And this one here has a tab on the back here, a little handle. And I'll explain that in a second. This wasn't originally designed as a cookie cutter. Um, this was originally designed as a beer stamp to be able to stamp in the top of the beer and leave a nice shamrock imprint in the head. Now, Guinness do make something similar. Uh, this version didn't work for that. 
Could be a few reasons. Could be the texture on the 3D print. It could be the flared out part from the uh, initial layer. Um, it could also be the fact that that stem was too small and the, the head was getting stuck in there and just forming inside. Could also be the fact that this was too big and too close to the edge of the glass and therefore the head didn't have the uh, side of the glass to hang on to. So we've made a few changes, we've downscaled it, we've got a bigger stem, so hopefully the next version will work. And uh, obviously with the um, stencil here, this is designed as a um, coffee art. So you can sprinkle a bit of chocolate dust on the top, um, make your Irish coffee a little more Irish. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I try to keep this as short as possible. Um, hopefully I've inspired you here. I hope you guys have a great St. Paddy's Day. Don't drink too much or drink too much, whichever way is best for you guys. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, share it out. Thanks for watching. See you next video.